Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, California Weather Watch. Today is March 5th and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop here. You can clearly see this trough dug out across the western coast of North America, continuing to pump cold air into the state of California. Had some nice thunderstorms across the coastal regions of Central California and the Bay Area last night. Nice mountain snow still accumulating across Northern California and the Sierra Nevada. Even some winter weather advisories down for the higher terrain of Southern California as well. And we're going to continue this on through through midweek here coming up before we bring a potential pattern change out of the southwest, more of a subtropical air mass towards the state of California. We'll take a look at that in some detail here coming up. Now, taking a look here, those lightning strikes last night up towards 300 of them. I know that was waking people up last night. I saw a lot of people commenting on the social media, like Twitter and whatnot. And this is a valid ending 5 a.m. here. I saw a lot of people commenting on my posts about it as well. So a nice little thunderstorm activity going across the Bay Area. Maybe some more of that over the next couple of days across Central and Northern California as well. Now, the storm is still ongoing here. You can see low snow levels are out there. Still major impacts. Do not travel if you do not have to. There's so much snow up there. It's hard to get rid of it. There's really no place to put it. And you can see these snow showers continuing all the way on in through the midweek period here. So heads up there. Nice graphic, as always, from Sacramento, California National Weather Service. This is backcountry. Avalanche danger is high. So just have a heads up for that. Visit, um, visit avalanche.org if you need more detail, uh, if you're going off into the backcountry. Now, taking a look here, this is Hanford National Weather Service, and you can see that snowfall coming in here still as we go on in through. This goes out to March 6th, uh, through tomorrow morning shown here. So still some big amounts coming. You can see the water equivalent map here on the left. This is also National Weather Service Hanford. They do a great job with these cross sections here. You can see once you start to get above 1,500 feet, you can start to see that measurable snow falling. And once you get really high in the elevation, you can see one to two feet of snowfall coming up here. This goes through Monday a.m. This is current hazards. You can see winter storm warnings in effect for a lot of the state, the higher terrain, winter weather advisories, even for some of the higher terrain across the Bay Area, down through Southern California, wind advisories as well. So still bringing the active weather in here for the next few days. You can see winter storm impacts. Do not travel if you do not have to. Can't be stressed enough. You know, wait till at least Tuesday probably here coming up before you try to cross these mountain passes out there. It is just wild out there. Whiteout conditions, huge amounts of snowfall already on the ground. Now, this is looking at thunderstorm outlook. We still have this chance today and on in through tomorrow. Now, I wanted to show you this here really quick. Um, this is the weather flow by Tempest. This is a weather station I just installed at my house. Now I compare it to my pro stuff, and it's doing really good. The temperature and barometer are really accurate, the UV and solar radiation. And you can see all these people with weather stations here across the Bay Area, for example, and you can click on each and every individual one of these and see their data and you can display your data on here as well and if you don't want to you can keep it private also but i've clicked on this station here just outside of san francisco there and you can see it was picking up lightning it's got lightning a detection system on it as well you can see the actual wind gust in real time moving across here it's a really good station it's really probably the top choice for an affordable home weather station if you don't need a pro setup no batteries needed you don't have to add any of that it's just solar powered and it broadcasts right to your phone. They store it in the cloud for you. All the data you can handle is there for you forever. So yeah, great station there. I'll put a link below. You'll want to use my code. You get like 10% off if you do that. So it'll give you some benefit there too. So anyway, just thought I'd pass that along to you guys since I get so many questions about what weather station to get. Now looking here, last night's European run. Put this into motion and you can see the snowfall just continuing as we go on through Monday. Tuesday afternoon. Here we go. Wednesday afternoon. It just continues with this cold air just hovering around the West Coast of North America as we go into Wednesday afternoon there. But look at the end of the run there. You see this out of the Southwest? That's the pattern change coming here. We're going to start to bring more of a subtropical air mass towards the state of California. All eyes are on this system here. We're just hoping we don't warm up too quick and bring too much precipitation at once where we start to cause some flooding issues. It is a potential, but you know things are still up in the air right now. Um, taking a look here. This is lightning flash density potential. And by the way, more on that here in a moment. We're going to go over some of that, uh, some of the 
scenarios here for this atmospheric river here towards the end of the video. So anyway, here's lightning flash density potential here. You can see as we go through this afternoon, there is that potential across mainly Northern California there. And as we go on in through this afternoon and tomorrow, we'll get uh, similar chances there as well. So just to have a heads up for that uh, thunderstorm potential. Now this is looking at maximum individual wave height. And you can see we are dealing with increased wave heights really across much of the state here. Get a bit of a break here as we go through midweek, then the next system start to arrive here out of the Southwest. Uh, bringing increased wave action as well towards next week. And so have a heads up for that. Check with your local authorities and National Weather Service information there. Now, this is a wider view of things here. There's Hawaii, there's California. This is up towards 18,000 feet or 500 millibars. Put that into motion. You can see this trough just churning its way across the West Coast and continuing to impact California as we go on and through midweek. And then you'll see the warmer air start to arrive here. And, you know, right now we're just crossing our fingers that we don't warm up too quick and we don't bring too much precipitation all at once. You know, all the temperatures at 18,000 feet are usually pretty chilly here, but you can see where that polar lobe was and then it backs off and we get this big pattern change coming. More on that here in a moment. This is a total snow could share through 60 hours and the NAM 3KM does a good job of showing individual terrain features in the high resolution model here. You can see across the higher terrain, even towards the Bay Area, some snowfall, big amounts of Sierras and even down towards Southern California as well. The Euro showing similar here. This is last night's run. This goes out 90 hours here and you can see the big snowfall amounts there as well. So still more snow to come in here, folks. You might want to put off travel to Tuesday or Wednesday if you can. It's no joke trying to cross those passes out there. Now, this is looking at 200 millibars, way up towards 39,000 feet, way in the atmosphere. You can see the trough impacting the region here, continuing to bring that cold air into California. But then you'll notice as we go on in towards the end of the week here, look at this southwest flow start to set up here. Pretty good model agreement that we are going to get this big pattern change coming on here. And this kind of extends all the way through the period here. We're now towards 300 hours out. And you can see kind of this relentless jet stream pointing itself at the state of California. Now, taking a look here, 5,000 feet, 850 millibars. This is this cold air dominating the West Coast right now. Continue to see it spin around and bring that additional snowfall for the higher terrain. But look at this warm air trying to surge in here as we go on in through Thursday night into Friday here. So right now, we're just hoping that we're not going to warm up too fast. I mean, too much precipitation at once with this big pattern change coming on here. So but it needs to be watched closely. Uh, though any given scenario is still, you know, unlikely at this point, something's going to happen. And we're just trying to make sure that we're prepared for it if it does start to get bad. Now, looking at this precipitable water, you can really get a good visualization on the atmospheric rivers here by looking at this. The cold trough over the West Coast of North America, big pattern change coming there. And you can see this atmospheric river pointing itself at the state of California as we go on in through later next week. This is the ensemble mean. So this is taking 50 separate ensemble members and then it averages them out together. And this is what it's coming up with. So it's pretty good model agreement here right now on the European, but we're getting fluctuation model to model here. So we have to monitor this closely as we go through the next few days. We continue this out and you can continue to see this pointed at the state of California. As you go out a little bit further, you know, it gets smoothed out a bit here. Since it is an ensemble run, it's just a general average. But you can see the subtropical air mass kind of pointed in the general direction of California here as we go through the extended forecast as well. Now, this is the deterministic run here. The difference is that deterministic, we take the initial conditions, the best we understand them, and we put them into the model and it just runs out. The ensemble members are all tweaked a little bit from the initial conditions to try to correct for the errors we may have in our initial conditions. And then we let those run out in the ensemble mean, and then we just average them all together and it can kind of give you an increased confidence forecast. But now we're looking at this trough here and you can see the deterministic also says this pattern change is coming as you can see this warmer air mass bearing down on the state here as we go towards the end of next week. So something to watch here, you know, it's, it's never worth getting, uh, you know, it's never worth stirring up fear about. It's just always better just to be prepared and have this in the back of your head as you can continue to see atmospheric rivers pointing at the state of California as we go out through the 10 day period here. And we'll break this down day by day as we go. This is Auburn Municipal Airport here. This is up towards what, about 1,500 feet here. And you can kind of see the trend and the increase here in the precipitation amounts as we get out towards the March 10th period here. Now, looking at this, this is also Auburn Municipal. This is total precipitation here, and you can kind of see this trend uptrending here. Not a great sign if we want to try to avoid flooding. So there is the potential for some flooding coming up here, 
but it's still low confidence right now. So you don't want to start sounding alarms just yet, but you can see the trend is increasing here. Now look at this, this is Truckee Tahoe Airport and this is what we don't wanna see. So you can see this is the freezing line, this white line here, that's the freezing line. And look how it jumps once you get to about the afternoon of March 9th and you can see the freezing level go above 10,000 feet. That is really not what you wanna see there, although then it does bring it back down after that. But this could be a period of concern if you bring enough precipitation and you get a lot of melting on an already saturated ground or with snowfall on the ground, the water runs off quickly, this can be bad news here. So this is kind of just something to keep in the back of your mind right now. We'll watch this closely again tomorrow and see how the models do. Looking at Truckee Tahoe Airport here as well, you can see this precipitation increase to the model model run trend. This would be last yesterday afternoon's model run, yesterday mornings, the previous day, and so on. So this is each individual deterministic run here, run out, and you can see that increase in that precipitation amount as we get out towards March 10th and 11th, shown there. Blue Canyon, you can see. This is up towards 5,000 feet here, and the grid includes, yeah, okay, so about 5,000 feet. But you can see the trend and in the increase here in the amount of precipitation falling as we've been going the last few days here. So that's kind of a concern there as well. This is looking at all the ensemble members here, all 50 of them, and you can see all of them have a lot of precipitation there. But the fact that they're not varying a little bit more kind of lowers the confidence in this event because... I have a feeling we'll be looking at this over the next couple of days and these are going to vary a lot. So the ensemble dispersion is not very good here. So we'll watch that here over the next couple of days. Uh, this is also Blue Canyon up there and you can see the snow level really spike or the freezing level above 10,000 feet there. So that's the period of concern here as we start to go through later next week, warming things up across the mountains with all that snow. You've got to be aware of that. So anyway, yeah, we'll watch this over the next few days here. Um, no sounding alarms yet. We're just kind of waiting and seeing what's coming up here. You know, things are going to change in the forecast. But anyway, just want to be prepared if something does start to trend and the precipitation amounts start to look kind of crazy here. But the pattern change is likely on its way here as we go through the end of next week. But we got a few days of this cold upper level low sitting here. And hopefully, if we're lucky, that atmospheric river will come and it'll be progressive and move down the state rather rapidly and things won't warm up too much. Uh, that's probably the most likely scenario at this point, but we'll watch it day by day, as I've said several times already now. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. We'll do this again tomorrow. We'll watch these model trends and we will talk to you then.